Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is amazing uh, or afternoon, evening, whenever you happen to be watching. Of course, we've got my guy Karma here. Come on, Karma. And of course, Karma is a panther chameleon, but he's what they call a nosy bee panther chameleon, which is a locality, right? So the interesting thing is that localities of chameleons are different in Madagascar as far as coloration. The nosy bee males are typically a blue color, and Karma is certainly absolutely incredible. And I think that panther chameleons are probably the coolest as far as handling chameleons. We have Vale chameleons, we have Jackson's chameleons, but when kids come, really holding a panther chameleon. Not only are they a hardy animal, and they really seem to endure the handling pretty well, but they also have relatively soft pads. Their claws aren't nearly as bad, so kids absolutely love them. So again, we have Karma, which is the only male panther chameleon that we have, but we had someone reach out to us and actually has a couple new localities of panther chameleons that they have that's two to three years old, and he just wanted to donate them to the zoo. So what do you say we go take a look and see what he brings? <laughs> and look at this monkey. He doesn't seem to be too happy right now, but he just literally got here. This is actually an ambulombi, which is the really the classic panther chameleon. I mean, typically when you see a panther chameleon, this is kind of the one that you think of, right? It's got that beautiful reds and greens, little blue hues to it. That is one stunning animal. And this guy's actually about two years old right now. Unbelievably perfect health. And again, we're going to always quarantine animals, right? You know, we never just bring an animal and throw it in the reptarium. Uh, so typically we're going to want to spend at least 30 days just kind of making sure their health is here. Even though these were raised up by the guy for over two years, uh, I'm sure they're completely healthy but I don't want anything to happen. But I tell you what, there's no doubt that this guy is gonna be super popular. Again, panther chameleons are amazing, and Karma is definitely one of the coolest animals when it comes to people coming and going, oh my God, I wanna hold a chameleon. Now we're gonna take a little of pressure off of Karma, and we have this beautiful locality right here. And like I said, it is a ripper. I mean, wow. And he's a little bit, you know, he's a little bit not sure what's going on, but we're gonna give him a little time to settle in, and I think he's gonna love it here. And then there's this guy here, really beautiful beautiful animal. This is a really interesting one here. And this is what they would call a nosy valley locality. And again, uh, I'm not sure that I'm saying all these localities. I'm not Madagascan, you know what I mean? But I think that it's something like that. But nevertheless, these guys typically have a lot more red than the nosy bees. And they'll have, you know, still the blues, but they have the reds. And this guy, you could tell, is probably in a little bit of a stressed out color mode, to be totally honest with you. Just came in, just kind of settling in and stuff like that. And these are like, again, quarantine type of a setup. And you'll notice between we have have cardboard, right? Because two male chameleons that see each other will actually get upset and it stresses them out tremendously and they'll actually fight. But nevertheless, he is a beautiful animal too. This one's probably about the same size as Karma and uh, it's it's just definitely looking at me like, I don't know, look at it standing up like that with, on its two feet. I love when chameleons do that. It's absolutely amazing. And they're just such incredible animals. Again, zygodactylus feet, stereocopic eyes. I mean, such interesting animals aren't they? And these are going to be great additions to the Reptarium when they finally get over there. Like I said, it'll be about a month or so before they get over there, but wow, is it going to be cool. Of course, we do need names for both of these two little guys. We have Karma and Destiny are our other panther chameleons. So let me know what you think these two male panther chameleons names should be, but wow, this guy is super, super cool. And that's the thing about panther chameleons. You can get like yellow ones, all green ones. I mean, now I'm kind of addicted. I want a whole bunch of panther chameleons from different localities. That's that's absolutely amazing. So nevertheless, uh, cool animals cannot be more happy that we're adding these in. It's gonna be an amazing addition to the Reptarium. But Bruce, looks like we're getting an upgrade on chicken strip today. Yeah, dude, honestly, I know you and I both have been like, man, that cage just looks yeah. rough right now. Today's the day. I, I really wanted to get his cage looking really, really nice. So uh, it's, 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 so obviously I'm not gonna do it. Right. Jessica's gonna do it. So, so you gotta tear it down for us. So you do the hard work and tear it down. I, I'm gonna make it sanitary. I'm gonna make it a beautiful place for him to not get sick in. And Jessica's gonna make it a beautiful place for him to live in. Oh, it sounds good. Well, yeah, that's the thing. I mean, it's really cool, a terrace cage and stuff like that, but there's no doubt that we've been going around and trying to just make everything look a little bit more aesthetically pleasing, right? So uh, Bruce will tear it down, Jessica will come and put a bunch of cool stuff in there, and let's see how this animal turns out.
Ooh, look at this, man. This is actually a tangerine albino Honduran milk snake that we're raising up. And oh my goodness, that's a good one right there. Again, that's the thing that's nice about it. You can breed these guys polymorphically to produce, you know, more orange, more red, more bands, you know, whatever the case may be. But in this particular case, we want it to have like the most kind of orange tangerine look with as little contrast with the yellow bands as possible. And oh my gosh, this is getting good. Another couple generations and my gosh, these things are going to be crazy but i cannot wait till next year till this girl is up to size because she is a crazy cool animal it's been a minute since i showed you guys our ackies which are of course a little dwarf monitor from australia super cool animals if you ever want to monitor lizards but there's like no way you can dedicate a 10 foot cage like we do uh dwarf monitors are the way to go and the ackies are kind of the most common and of course they come in like yellow and red these are the red ackies and you can see how chill and super intelligent they are i mean you can train these guys just like a giant monitor you can target Target train them, you can have them eat off of tongs, you can have them do all the things that we do with the big monitors, but in a little body. I will say when they're younger, they're a little bit more skittish than the big ones. I always say, you know, think about the difference between a Great Dane and a Chihuahua, right? The Chihuahua is always that hyper little dude. Well, that's the same thing with pretty much all dwarf species, but that doesn't mean that you can't have a tame Chihuahua, right? Of course, you can have a tame monitor like this too. Absolutely incredible animals. And again, these are almost adult now, getting close to that adult size. And it's pretty cool to think that you can get a adult monitor that can fit in the palm of your hand. You guys know that we really have two distinct lines of red Tiki's geckos, which is Dracula and Deadpool. And we've been producing some Deadpool. We talk about how Deadpool's so amazing, but Jessica, holy cow. Yeah, this is probably the best one we produced so far this year. Yeah, and that's uh, a Dracula line. Yeah, actually, for whatever reason, <laughs> the Dracula ones turned out better this year. Really? Uh, yeah. Isn't I think weird? maybe just the different genes combined yeah. better because I used a different male, not from Tiki's geckos. Oh, gotcha. Um, yeah, so if yeah. We, yeah, so if we would have bred maybe two Deadpool or two Dracula together, maybe you'd line breed through. But we wanted to get some out bred new gene pool in as well too this, so this one turned male, out so this it's is a boy all, yeah it's a boy oh. so this one will, we're keeping him and raising oh him my God. so yeah next year we can take the dracula this one here breed it to the deadpool that way we're outbreeding both really red lines oh my gosh those it's babies gonna are gonna be, be amazing, crazy yeah. Holy uh that's a big difference, huh? Dude, oh my god. <laughs> Jessica did an amazing job. I think chicken strip's gonna really love it. And he's just gonna feel a little bit more secure, right? Because the plants and stuff like that are gonna feel a little bit more comfortable. Can't wait to see what he looks like. So let's just go ahead and let him loose Bruce. Hey, that right that was nice. Uh, uh, like, loose uh, Bruce. Loosey, Bruce, Bruce. Loose Bruce. Oh man. I don't really think I want my name associated with looseness, but <laughs> <laughs> loose Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> Come All on. right, let's see how cool this thing is. Yeah, I know you're already excited to get out of me. Get away from me. Oh, look how beautiful he's going to look in oh. there. Gosh, the colors are just going to pop so much more. Oh, check it out, big guy. Wow. Absolutely incredible. Yeah. I'd say that's pretty, that's pretty, that's pretty, that's gonna pretty sweet. That's going to be beautiful, I tell you what. And again, I know that it takes, it's, you know, we've been, you know, this cage has been here for two years, you know, but uh, it's just taking time. We're slowly getting around. We're finally getting our groove, getting around to redesigning things, lots more leaf litter, lots more foliage and stuff like that. So we're doing this with all the enclosures here. So uh, couldn't be more happy. They did an amazing job. 2020 is almost over. I think most people are pretty excited about that, which means 2021, we can do some fun things. And of course, black-headed pythons remind me of one thing and that's Australia that's right I was supposed to go to Australia in September and obviously that wasn't going to happen so I'm hoping in 2021 I can get to Australia believe it or not for my 10th time that's right I've been there nine times I want to get to double digits you know what I mean but there is so much travel I want to do in 2021 I think that we're all been cooped up for so long that we're just excited to get out of here I mean I want to get to Africa I want to get over to the UK I want to get to Italy I want to get to Indonesia get to China I mean I want to get all over the place but Australia 
Australia has a special spot in my heart. There's actually a place up in Darwin called Fog Dam that is probably my favorite place on the planet, to be honest with you. You can find water snakes, you can find death adders, you can find tons of saltwater crocodiles, tons of amphibians, slaty grays. I mean, there's just so many animals. As a matter of fact, it had the highest predator to prey ratio on the planet at Fog Dam. How cool is that? So I'm hoping that although right now I just can admire these beautiful blackheads from Australia, hopefully I'll be out in the Australian bush sometime in 2021. Sunfire is the coolest retic I think I own when it comes to climbing. She is always up on the branches. And I, every time I walk by this cage and see her, I just have to stop and admire it because that is freaking cool. Again, catching retics in a back cave in Indonesia. Uh, I remember them looking like this and oh, now she's coming out. And I think that she thinks she's gonna get fed. So uh, again, I'm gonna continue to work with Sunfire because like I had mentioned the other day, I want her to be the next giant snake like Lucy, but tame that we can actually take out. I need to have an 18, 20 foot python that I can bring out so people can do it, but they have to be bulletproof. And I really do believe other than the food mode, this girl can be that animal. I haven't talked about blue tongue skinks very often lately because they've been in kind of brume which is just a cool down. This is actually what they call an Eastern eye banded. And guess what guys, if you're in the market for blue tongue skinks, I hate to say this, you guys know that BHB has to downsize in some areas so that we can expand at the Reptarium. We are gonna be selling some of our adult blue tongue skinks. So uh, I'll have them out on the website sometime next week and I'll do an update. But if it's something you're interested, Easterns, Northerns, really cool blue tongue skinks, ready to breed, literally in brumation now, ready to breed here in another few weeks. They're gonna come up and actually start breeding. I mean, you could produce baby blue tongue skinks. So again, keep an eye out on the BHB Reptile website because uh, we're gonna be putting a bunch of these guys up. And as much as it's gonna break my heart, I just need to downsize in some areas. And these guys are one of the areas that we're gonna reduce a little bit. We're keeping a bunch, but we are gonna reduce some. So uh, I don't know which ones. It's gonna be so hard to choose, but there's gonna be some banger animals available. Back with Jessica, and we talked about red geckos earlier with the Dracula, and this is a male that you're starting to pair up. Yeah, so and I actually got him in with our Deadpool lady right oh, here. So this is the Deadpool girl. And then what line is this? So this one actually, it came from Tiki's Geckos, but it was labeled Mock Reptiles. So oh, okay. I think it's actually from them. Oh, um, okay, gotcha. Which is cool because like another bloodline. Another line. bloodline, yeah, that's crazy. But oh my gosh, I didn't even realize we had a third red line that was this good. Yeah, this wow. one's so like bright and neon, oh, oh isn't gosh, it? Oh my gosh, it's so crazy. So what a pairing. I mean, can you imagine the babies from these two? And again, because they're outbred, that's going to be great. Wow, I hope. And she's starting to lay eggs or? Yeah, she's starting to lay eggs. So, oh, so hopefully. Gosh either by this guy and not, uh, not the other male. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so hopefully this guy does his job. Yep. Man, I am excited about that. So that's pretty cool to get a couple new chameleons, chicken strips got a new cage. I mean, things are good, right? We're ending the year in a positive note. 2021 is gonna be amazing. It may start out a little bumpy, but I have high hopes if you guys enjoyed this. As a matter of fact, speaking of the year, right here's the playlist. You can watch all of 2020 from January 1st. So go ahead and click that playlist up here. Can you do me a favor? Subscribe to my podcast channel. Seriously, the podcast is really cool. I think you guys will enjoy it. Please help me get to 3 million right here by hitting that subscribe button. Turn your post notifications on. Have an absolutely wonderful day. Remember, be kind to someone and I promise I'll see you tomorrow.